Hello, everyone. Thank you. Um, my name is Christopher. That's my colleague, Bernd. We're from BrainBot, uh, and we're here to present the Trust Lines Network, which is an open protocol for decentralized IOU-based currency networks. So we broke the presentation up in two parts. I will start by presenting the basic idea and the problem we're trying to solve. And then Band is going to take over, and he's going to present the technical implementation, give you an overview of the system, and explain how things work, and where we currently are with the project. So to start off with, mm, let's think about something for cryptocurrencies, which is a truly unique concept, which is this idea of permissionless decentralized payments, everyday payments, everyday purchases for all of us. Um, this is unique because it enables us to do payments without the use of a bank account or any kind of financial intermediary to do a payment. And this is something which, at least on a global scale, we haven't actually seen before. There are some problems with it, which is that it doesn't actually work. Um, and <laughs> there's, kind of, there's kind of two really good reasons for that. First of all, the, the issuance of these currencies are kind of flawed because ideally we're supposed to be able to turn on a computer and, and run, uh, you know, help run the network. And if we do that, we're rewarded with cryptocurrency for validating a block. We get some money and then we can go spend that at a grocery store or for tokens. But of course that doesn't actually work because, well, mining is kind of a specialist industry. It requires special hardware and, and most people will never validate a block with their regular MacBook or whatever. Uh, so where does the rest of us get cryptocurrencies? Well, we buy them on exchanges. Um, and that's kind of a problem because these exchanges, well, they, they give cryptocurrencies for payments of really poor usability. Is that we buy them with fiat first, and then we exchange them to use something that we want to use for payment. It's kind of a cl clumsy user experience. It's not really good for, for, for payments. So if we were to rethink this and say, let, let's try to create a cryptocurrency that's really good for payments, ideal. Um, I would present three arguments that it should definitely have. It should incentivize being spent. So when I have it, I should want to go spend it. Um, it should not need to be bought with fiat on exchanges. And it should still be interoperable with the Ethereum ecosystem, with the cryptocurrency ecosystem, because well, that's, that's what we want, right? We want to be able to use it with our favorite dApps or protocols. We want to use it to buy ERC-20 tokens, whatever. Um, one of the ways we could do this is if we took money as IOUs and implemented it on social networks, uh, and we issued it in these individual trust relationships, and we used these trust relationships to make payments. So we'd have this global payment network um, which is the original Ripple idea from 2004 by Ryan Fugger. Not what Ripple is doing nowadays, but um, the original one. Um, and it's basically these individual trust relationships which are people who know and trust each other, and they issue each other credit lines, and this works pretty much how it works in the real world. For example, if you go out to a bar and you forgot your credit card, most likely one of your friends would borrow you $10 or let you pay, you know, pay for you for the rest of the night so that you could you know, drink beers with them. You could settle at a later point, or maybe next, next week you, you pay. So if people have these relationships already, they have these credit lines, uh, what we could do is when people issue those bilaterally between two trusting friends, they have them what we call a trust line. And this trust line com uh, consists of, of two different credit lines and a credit limit and a balance which indicates money was spent. So let's suppose Alice and Bob are good friends and they wanna, they, Alice wants to pay Bob. She spends five of her $10 credit line creating an imbalance between Alice and Bob. And this IOU that Alice, I owe me, uh, that Alice issues Bob is then money which was created because we have something of value which was exchanged for this IOU. And this is good for Bob because Bob knows and trusts Alice and has given her this credit line allowing her to spend up to the specified credit limit. It's totally pointless to use money for this or cryptocurrency. We don't, we don't need that at all actually because people do this all the time. And as I explained, people do this at bars. They don't need cryptocurrency or any kind of money for this. This is just basically how friends work. What we need money for is when we have trust problems. So if Alice wants to pay Charlie, she has this issue that Charlie does not care about her IU because Charlie doesn't know or trust him. Uh, so she's not going to accept that IU. And then if we go back to this payment network, what we could do is we could, or Alice could discover a path of connecting trust lines that would allow her to back the IOU with something or someone that Charlie would trust. So we see there is a path of connecting trust lines between Alice and Charlie. And if Alice then wants to pay Charlie, what Alice does is she spends five of her $10 credit line with Bob, and then Bob spends five of his $10 credit line with Charlie. So this solves two problems. Um, first of all, it allows Charlie to receive a payment from someone that he can trust because he's dependent on the solvency of Bob 
and not of Alice. So that's good for him. It also allows Alice to pay a stranger because she can now send a payment to anyone um, so long as it is backed by someone who trusts that person. Of course, this only really works if Bob is actually willing to do this. But for Bob, this is not really a problem because his net balance remains unchanged. So he still has $20 he can spend. I mean, he has $15 in one trust line, five plus $10 credit line, and he has five remaining in the other trust line. There's a little bit of a thing missing there, which is, of course, at some point in time, Bob might, his trust line might run out. It might be, there might not be a capacity left in the trust line. And that leaves him with two options. Either he has to settle um, or he has to ask Charlie to increase the capacity of the trust line, given, giving, giving him a larger credit line. Neither option is really that nice. It's kind of awkward. But this is a quite powerful uh, feature of the idea is that we can mostly avoid settling. So when we have many users on the same network, we have uh, money which flows in many directions. Sometimes you're getting paid, sometimes you are paying, sometimes you're forwarding payments in different directions. And this uh, social approach to money helps money circulate, uh, meaning that debt cancels out over time. And so for most scenarios, real world settlements are unnecessary. And as you can see here, what I've tried to do is illustrate how Dave making a payment to Bob cancels out the debt that Alice had with Charlie or that Bob had with Charlie from Alice's payment. Uh, so that's basically the basic idea. That's how money implemented on the social graph could work. Um, now the next question would be, how will we access such a system? And the way that we would do that is by um, having an accessibility system which is a little bit superior to buying money on an exchange. So you simply just download the app, you join by creating a trust line with a friend, and then you can start sending and receiving payments. That's basically it. So compared to first joining an exchange, wiring money, this is a little bit faster. Um, the money that we could use to pay each other with is issued on smart contracts. Um, this we call them currency networks. These currency networks are highly customizable. They can be denominated into virtually anything that people find valuable. Um, beers, Bitcoin, money, uh, gold, enchiladas, whatever is people like, they can, they can trade. And to reflect the denomination, they can also use these um, they can customize the currency network such that it reflects the denomination. They can have um, user groups be open or closed. So for example, the Euro token network might be more open than a local economy who wishes to control exactly who can issue different trust lines. Um, so they, may hide they might have a permissioned approach to it. We can also customize rules on interest and the specific value of credit lines. Now the final piece of the puzzle is of course, how can we buy ERC20 tokens or F? Um, and we can use this because every the mobile payment app also comes with a wallet which can hold Ethereum or ERC20 tokens. So if Alice wants to buy some ETH and she has been onboarded to the Trust Lines network and Dave wants to sell some um, and they don't know or trust each other, what Dave can do is he can list um, some ETH on a decentralized exchange. And if Alice likes that offer, she can take it. And if there's a path with sufficient capacity, um, the decentralized exchange will swap the ETH for Trust Line money. So Dave will now have um, more credit in the currency network that, that they're both partic participating in. And Alice will now have uh, F in her wallet address. So <coughs> what that solves is the dependency we have on centralized exchanges because we can um, provide accessibility to cryptocurrencies without the use of, of fiat money. It removes the requirement to have a bank account, which I personally think is, is quite important because we can also provide cryptocurrency and decentralized financial services for people who might not have a bank account to begin with. Um, and finally, it also allows us to uh, purchase Fs with um, trust line money without having um, or to, to interact with any debt. So the basic idea is you should be able to get access to cryptocurrency by joining, creating a trust line with a friend, and then have access to the whole Ethereum ecosystem. So that's the basic idea. And yeah, give this to you. Okay. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Bernd. Uh, I'm one of the developers behind Trustland. Hi, uh, my name is Bernd. I'm one of the developers behind Trustlines, and I want to give you now a brief overview about the technical impl implementation. Um, so the architecture of the Trustlines network will be is a three-tier architecture. Uh, on the core of it, we have uh, the smart contracts that handle uh, handle all the logic, uh, especially the currency networks and the decentralized exchanges. And um, as a user interface, we are developing a mobile app um, that comes with a good user experience. Uh, this is also where the private key will be, and which uh, um, um, will, 
to sign the transactions to actually do transactions within the Trust Lines network. In between, uh, we have a middle layer that we call the relay servers. Uh, they are helper services, um, for, for example, for the pathfinding. I will talk about them later. Um, today, I don't want to talk about uh, the mobile app. I want to focus on the platform itself. So we'll talk first about the smart contracts. And after that, I will talk a little bit more about the relay service. Um, so the currency, uh, currency network contract uh, manages all the trust lines within one currency network. That means it keeps tracks of the balances between two friends and it, it keeps track of all, uh, the uh, credit limits of these two friends that, gave each other, uh, that they gave each other. Um, it has a logic to execute mediated transfers. That means um, it, uh, when you do a transfer within the system, it will uh, update all the balances accordingly and uh, make sure that they will stay within the given credit limits. Um, we want impl to implement existing token standards. Uh, however, this will not be fully possible because they are different because our um, currency network is IOU-based. Uh, so that means there will be differences. For example, the balance of a user can be negative and the transfer within our, our system needs another parameter. It needs the uh, the path over which the transfer should happen. So we're aiming uh, to for developing a new standard um, for IU-based currency networks. Um, next, I want to talk about the decentralized exchange contract. Um, so the trust lines network should be a, uh, will be a platform to host multiple currency networks. So one challenge we need to solve there is how do we want to connect, how can we connect these networks, and how can we bridge gaps, because um, if you want to do a transfer, um, and uh, there's either no connection or a too long connection, um, especially at the beginning, we want to gap this. So the decentralized exchange contract can help us to solve that um, because it allows to buy a collateralized token on an exchange, for example, at ETH, um, with trust lines money, and this ETH can then be used uh, to close gaps and to make cross-currency payments. Uh, let's look at the following example to see how this could work. So if Alice uh, wants to pay Dave in US dollar, but she's only part of the Euro network, she can make a transaction within the Euro network to buy ETH on an exchange. These ETH can then be used to, bu uh, to buy US dollar on another exchange in the US dollar network. Uh, for Alice and Dave, this will be all transparent. It will be just one atomic uh, Ethereum transaction. And this is, is how Alice can uh, do a cross-currency payment to Dave. Um, so let's now talk about this middle layer I presented before. Um, so why do we uh, even need these relay servers? Um, so as we learned uh, for a payment, we need to find a valid path. Um, and preferably we want to find the shortest one because that is the one that will save gas um, because we don't have to update so many trust lines. Um, but it's not feasible to do this calculation for the path uh, on the phone because it, uh, the f you have limited memory on your phone. Uh, and it's also not feasible to do it on chain just because the computation is too expensive. So relay servers uh, are essentially just helper service to uh, calculate this path and in our current setup will be used as a gateway to the blockchain. However, this could be, could be changed later by using uh, light clients. Um, introducing these relay servers, however, create a different kind of problem because we no longer can enforce by the smart contracts with path, which path will be chosen. Right, so uh, the only thing that the smart contract checks is that the path is valid so that all the um, balances stay within the credit lines, but we cannot ch uh, enforce which path. Um, this is important because there's, for example, one property that we want to have in our system. We want to balance out and cancel debt. Um, so to incentivize this behavior, we uh, aim, but this is, currently, uh, this is currently a work in progress. We're not really like done with this. We aim for like, uh, implementing a fee and reward system um, to incentivize it, this balancing out. So there will be one fee that we call the, in, uh, the imbalance fee reward. Um, this is uh, to be paid by users adding imbalances to the system and it gets rewarded to the one uh, um, decreasing the imbalance. There's another uh, fee reward system for capacity that we also want to include that is just to incentivize providing capacity. Um, and this is, also like this is basically paid by the one using the capacity to route the transfer and gets rewarded to the one um, uh, um, providing the capacity. Yeah, there, will, there are also mandatory fees that we will have. Um, there are obviously the gas fees for the Ethereum um, system, uh, and there will be probably relay uh, server fees because um, we need to incentivize running dedicated relay servers by third parties. Yeah, so how, would, how does it affect now the pathfinding algorithm? 
Um, the pathfinding will obviously look for subsistence capacity and the shortest paths to save gas. But now with the new fees, it will also aim for minimizing uh, uh, the added imbalance or it will cancel out debt. So let's look at this following example. Uh, if Dave wants to uh, pay Bob, and there are two uh, uh, paths with the same length, one over Earl and one over Charlie. Um, we can see here that the um, upper path is uh, worse because it will add, it will increase the already existing imbalances, where the lower path will cancel out debt, so it will actually not uh, increase the overall imbalances within the system. So if we add those fees, uh, the lower one will uh, be slightly cheaper, so Dave will, um, will hopefully choose this path. Um, so that was it about uh, what I wanted to present a little bit about what we're working on. Um, our current pr project status right now is um, we have a working prototype on the uh, on the Robson testnet. It already uh, we already have uh, implemented the currency network uh, with mediated transfers, direct transfers, and we can give each other credit lines. Um, we are currently working on new features. We we uh, um, working on implementing the just uh, the fees I just mentioned. Um, we are working on implementing the decentralized exchanges and uh, other features I didn't talk about yet. But um, we're also working on the mobile app. Um, you can you can uh, watch our progress on our GitHub repository. And if you want to know more about the general idea, we have a white paper on our website. You can also check that out. Um, I want to emphasize that we aim to create an open protocol. So we're working on open APIs. Um, you can also check that out on our repository. Um, for the release servers, we aim for a RESTful API, and we want to implement, uh, we want to develop a JavaScript library that makes it easy to um, to also uh, develop third-party mobile apps besides the one we will uh, actually um, build. And we also want to aim that it will be easy to use um, our app, mobile app, but also a third-party mobile app together with each other, so make payments from one app to the other. Yeah. So uh, let me summarize that um, we at Framework Technology work on an open protocol for decentralized IE-based currency networks. Um, this will enable global payments based on a network of already existing uh, individual trust relationships. We think it's an old but powerful idea that can increase adoption of cryptocurrencies and made it uh, easier to access for everyone. Uh, thanks, everybody. And if you have questions or if you uh, um, want to talk about the idea, please feel free to approach us.